Now, oh, I've talked to a lot of you this week. It's been really great to meet a lot of you. And a lot of you have asked me, uh, Mark, what do you do for a living? And invariably, whenever you, any of you ask me this, I just get sort of tongue-tied and I stumble through an answer. And I'm not normally a tongue-tied person. I'm normally fairly glib. And it's a very difficult answer for me to give in sort of a short little phrase. And it's not because I don't know where my bread and butter comes from. Let me tell you, I know who pays me and I know what they pay me for. But it's because I think what I'm getting paid for doesn't really fit neatly into a few words. If I were going to phrase it in a few words, I'd say, well, I think a lot and I share what I think and people pay me for sharing what I think about things. And that doesn't really sound substantial. It sounds kind of almost a little bit sketchy. But then you never heard about anyone thinking about something and not getting paid because they didn't share, because then they're just thinking, what difference does it make? So, you know, that's roughly what I do. But lately, what I've been doing is I've been sharing my thinking about sharing. And that's really what I'm going to talk about this afternoon. So, I get paid for sharing what I think about sharing. Okay, yes, it's a little bit bizarre, but that's exactly what's going on. Now, sharing. Let's talk about that. Sharing is an innate human behavior, which is another way of saying that it is strongly selected for in all human populations. If you think about this, it's very logical. People who share are more likely to survive, are more likely to pass their genes on to another generation if they practice a lot of sharing. And that seems very, very obvious. And we know that antique human cultures, so tribal cultures, paleolithic cultures, however you want to call them, I prefer antique because that really doesn't sort of make them uh, a little bit uh, less than they are, they, they practice sharing as an essential cultural ethic, that a tribe actually shares all of its resources for the good of the tribe. And we really don't get to this idea of selfishness or private property until, eh, you know, you can argue about it, 10,000 years ago, probably sort of put your foot in the ground and say roughly 10,000 years ago. Because in order to have selfishness, you need to have two things. You need to have a superabundance of goods. You need to have sort of more than people need. And you also need to have power structures which can reinforce a perpetual inequity in distribution of goods. So we didn't really start to get those things until 10,000 years ago. And Ayn Rand aside, selfishness is not the innate human condition. It is a force out there in the world, there's no question about it. But sharing is that. And in fact, we share because it's in our own self-interest to share. It's really such a deep part of us that even though we can become enormously enthralled in the material world, we still practice sharing. And if you take a look, the two richest people in this world have somehow managed to push all the way through materialism to the other side. And what are they doing? Warren Buffett and Bill Gates are now spending the rest of their lives giving away, sharing all of their wealth. All right? So, even though these are masters of capital and acquisition and build these enormous empires, Bill Gates is probably going to die in a relative sense poor. But we all share, not just them, we all share. And we share in little ways and we share in big ways. And in the past few years, it's become possible because of our computers and internets and all that stuff to share media. Now, we've been able to share media realistically for about 500 years since the invention of printing. You can give someone a book, you can give someone a broadsheet, and of course, lately, you can give someone a film canister if you want, or you can give them a videotape, you can give them a CD, and you can give them a DVD. But now, really, most of what we share are pointers to things. So, I might point you at an MP3 file, Coco, I might point Kevin at a torrent, I've done that a lot lately, um, and I might point Eric at a web page. So, but I'm sharing these different things, and of course, because they're just ones and zeros and they, you can't really hold them and they don't have any materiality, it's very easy to share them and you can share them basically at the speed of light. The way we share them, which is the thing that I want to start off with, is a three-stage process. So first off, one of us, say Dave, is out there surfing and he just accidentally finds this most amazing thing. And because everything is so deeply interconnected on the web and through our communications technologies, it's very easy to just stumble across things. Those accidental moments happen a whole lot. And Dave goes, oh my god, this is so cool, this is so cool. And so he has that moment of finding things. And then almost in exactly the next moment, he thinks, Eric is gonna love this. All right? What he's got is he's got 
almost all of us up in his head, little people running around there, and he knows what these people like, and he knows what these people are into, and he knows that the way that he reinforces that social bond with those people who are running around up in the head is to deliver them just the right little data bomb that's just gonna make their day. So he finds it and then he filters it against the people he knows are going to be interested. He goes tap, 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 and he forwards it along. Finding, filtering, forward it. Those are the three Fs. And of course, Eric gets it, goes, wow, this is really cool, and what does he do? He sends it along. And this is the, the engine that is powering everything that's going on. And it's not a new thing. This is an innate, ancient human behavior. It's simply been really accelerated by the fact that we have these networks that make it possible for us to share these things around. And I mean, when I say it's ancient, it's not even 200,000 years old. It's not even as old as humanity, because as near as we can tell, all the hominids, so that's gorillas, bonobos, chimpanzees, and humans, they all share. All right, so we're talking about the ancestor species to all of these. The social species, which was the ancestor six million years ago, seven million years ago, who knows, when the family trees started to break up between these different species from the common ancestor. They all share with each other. And why do they share? It's because when you share, you reinforce your connection to the community and you also reinforce your value to the community. So there are real strong, strongly selected reasons for why we share in all of these ways. And it's interesting because it's been around six million years, it's actually started to be incorporated into our biology. They now understand that there is an area in your brain that gets really charged up when you detect a situation which is unfair, where things, resources are not being shared equitably. They know this, they can test it, you can drop someone in and do an fMRI and the area just lights up. So, when we're teaching children to share, which we do when they're three, four, five years old, really what we're doing is we're guiding them into the fact that there's this area in this brain. Your brain doesn't boot up all at once. Different systems mature at different ages. And what we're doing is we're helping them into a smooth integration of that innate human behavior. Now, sharing has a lot of obvious benefits for the family, for the tribe, for the community. But what's interesting, and what's happened really somewhat suddenly, is that it is now possible for all of us to share globally. And of course, the best example of this